Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is me showing a Pythonic solution to one of Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I have said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should, if you want to boost your Excel formula game. And this is challenge 297, and we'll be talking about, you know, pronic number. So first of all, what's a pronic number? You can see the definition here. A pronic number is a number which results from the product of two consecutive integers. For example, 506 when you multiply 22 and 23. A simpler one would be 6, you know, which can result from multiplying 2 and 3. So our mandate is simple. Just look at these numbers, you know, and return only those that are pronic. I have put out a video where I used, you know, a formula solution, you know, but in this one, I want to use Python. I want to keep the two videos independent, independent in the sense that I want to explain you know, the logic here so that somebody who watches this one, you know, would be able to understand it. Maybe subsequently, I may be putting both in the same video, but, you know, I'm also considering the length. So I'm trying to keep them, you know, separate for now. So we've seen the simple definition here. But the question is, when I have a number like six, I know that, you know, there are many pairs of consecutive numbers numbers that can be multiplied, you know, but I need to test all of them. So, first of all, I could start with 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6. If any of those pairs multiply to give me 6, then it means that 6 is a pronic number. But when you think about that deeply enough, then you realize that, oh, you're actually investing more in calculations than you need to. Let me show you an example of what I mean. You have a number like 20. First thing that comes to your mind is create a sequence, 1, 2, once you cross the bridge, the bridge here is the square root of the number. Any integer above that, you know, cannot be multiplied by any other integer greater than it to still give you 20. This is what I mean. Very simple. Square root of 20, you know, is 4.47. 4.47 obviously is the number that if you multiply by itself, it will give you, you know, 20. So now if you take the integer, maybe, which is just below this, this will give you 4. Now, 4 is lower than 4.47. So the only way, you know, you can get a 20 is by multiplying 4 with something above 4.47. That's the only way. Because 4.47 by itself, when multiplied, gives you 20. Now, you've taken a smaller number. For you to still have that result, 20, you need to multiply 4 by a bigger number. Obviously, it has to be the number above 4.47, which is just the integer above it which is 5. Aside that, for this to work, we've already said it must be consecutive. So it means that if 1 is 4, yeah, the other one could either be 3 or 5. But you already know that 3 wouldn't work, right? Because two smaller numbers than the square root cannot give you that number. So the next number here is just, you know, 4 plus 1. So what this means is the logic is very simple. Once you get the int of the square root of the number, meaning get the square root of the number, get the integer that is just lower than that, and get the integer that is just above that. If you multiply those two together and they give you the number, the number is a pronic number. So the integer just below the square root multiplied by the integer just above the square root. If they give you, you know, a product of the number itself, then you have a pronic number. So that's the logic that we're going to implement on the next sheet. But before then, I want to thank those who have subscribed to my channel. You keep the channel growing and you keep me doing this. For those who haven't, well, this is an opportunity for you to subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon so that when I post a new video, you will be the first to know. So let's get back to Excel. So in here, we want to do it with Python. So the first thing to do here is just to pull up an equals to PY. I have put out a video, uh, my first Python video, which I called, I think is, is the string or is the word sorted. I explain in a little more detail, you know, some of the nuances of Python, you know, just so that people who are not too familiar can still get it. The logic is the same. It's just understanding, you know, the syntax and how to implement it. Okay. So I will try and do the same thing in this video, you know, so, you know, just excuse the length. It's just in a bit for you to understand. So the first thing you want to do is to get, of course, your source data, which is this. Right? The moment you do that, you can see that Excel uses this Excel function, you know, and pulls the range in here. I know that I might use this a little more than once. So just the way you would do in let, you know, a let function or you define a variable. I will do the same here. So I can call this, you know, just do this. I say, let me call this norm. Okay? So that... You know, when I refer to norm, I'm just referring to everything in there, right? Okay, so you can see that that's a data frame which, you know, you can preview. And like I said in the previous video, I see that it lends itself more when writing it this way to like a NumPy array. So the next thing I'll do is, okay, 
from a data frame, you can always get, you know, what the first column is. You can see this is a data frame, which is just one column. Now, Python uses zero indexing. So if I say, give me, you know, like, you know, the zeroth index, which means the first column, it's going to give me the same data, but a different object type. You notice the first one was data frame. Now, see this one, you know, when you commit with control enter. Let's see. So this gives you a pandas series, which is like, in quotes, a one-dimensional array. The moment you then do a dot value, you see something happen here, okay? And you see that now it's a NumPy array. The result you can't see in here, what you just do is basically come here, you know, and change this to an Excel value. You can use a shortcut, you know, Control alt shift m and you kind of see the same thing. Anyway, the point is we've stored this in the norm variable. So what we are going to do is we are going to loop through norm, which is like go through, you know, each of the numbers, right? And anyone that meets that criteria, we already mentioned what the criteria is, you know, we would add it to you know, a particular list. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start up with a list, which I call LST. It's just going to be an empty list. So now, right now, it doesn't have anything. I will look through each of these numbers and I will test that criteria. The integer of the square root of the number multiplied by, you know, that plus one is e equals to the number. If it is, then add that number into this list. Then at the end of the whole thing, I will return the list, basically. Okay? So now we go into a loop, which is using a for. So I can say for, I just have any variable for x in, you know, norm. So what you are saying is that you want to use x as the iterator to iterate true norm, where norm represents all these numbers. So the first time x goes in, x will be 6. Once you are done with that calculation, x will become 144, 182, and so on. So for x in norm, okay, what do you want to do? You always have to indent. That's the way Python understands, you know, which block of code is what, right? So you can't just, like some that had that bad habit in VBA of non-indenting, and it still works here, it wouldn't. So you need to indent. So now this is where we do the test. Okay, so what are we testing? We have an if because we know we are testing. It's a condition. So if what? So we need to check the square root of the number. So the first thing is we can do int of the square root of the number. So the number in this case here will be x. To do that in Python, you know, when you say x, this is is version of exponential. In Excel, you will say x raised to power. This is what you will do in Excel. In Python, you know, you are doing like two multiplications. This is exponential. So x raised to power, you know, 0 0.5. That's square root of x. So you take the int of this, okay? Right? So then you now multiply this by, you know, the int of it, okay? Plus 1. So this is like saying the the number or the integer that is just below the square root multiplied by the integer just above the square root. If these two are equals to here, when you are doing a comparison, you are using two equal signs. It's not an assignment. You are not saying here, this way you did an assignment to say number should be equal to this. Here you are comparing. You are saying, is this equal to? So is this equal to the number? That's what you are testing here. Okay? So you use two for comparison. So you say, is this equal to x? So if it is equal to x, what do you do? You want to then, you know, append, meaning you want to add that number x into that list that you created here. Okay, don't forget you created like a placeholder. And then after doing this, if it meets the criteria, then add it in there. So at the end of the whole thing, you know, basically what you want to return is just, you know, the list. That's what it is. Okay, so let's see that. All right, and you can see that we have only the numbers that meet the criteria, which are the pronic numbers now this is the same logic i used in the previous video you know after doing this i now went ahead to do it you know with a list comprehension which is just like a shorthand of this same thing basically doing the same thing but you know with a shorthand so let me show you how that looks like here so you launch this again at the same time let's start this up here so let me just select this right i could call this in the same vein you know just call this norm Okay, so now let me show you the syntax for list comprehension. The first thing is, you know, here, what's the result when, you know, you do whatever it is you want to do? Result, you know, for iterator, you know, whatever your iterator is in whatever array you're iterating through and then whatever conditions it is, you know, that you know, follow. This is kind of how it looks like. So this is what you are trying to replicate, you know. So if you think about it, this is like saying for i in like we did before if this is this but what do i want to return i want to return 
you know, the number X. That's kind of what this is. Let me just put a pound sign in front here so that I can comment this line out. It's not going to be executed. So it's basically just what some will call like a syntax sugar. Okay, so what do you want to return? If you are looping through like using X, then it means that, you know, you want to return X, which is the number. So want to return, you know, X for you know, X, which is also the iterator in what are you looping through? Basically, you're looping through this, you know, that's the list of numbers. So you could put this here and I just get maybe just, uh, you know, the first column of that. Okay. So X for X in this. And then what's the condition? The condition is if you do the same thing we did before, right? Which is that what? Int of X raised to power 0 0.5, that's square root of this you know, times the same thing, int of x raised to power 0 0.5, you know, plus 1. If the multiplication of these two is equal to x, basically is what you're saying. This can be shortened, but yeah, I mean, this is not like, you know, shortest code competition. This is you <laughs> understanding how it works. So, you know, this is basically doing everything I did before in just one line, okay? So this is the result, which is x. You know, for x, which is also the iterator in this is what we are looping through, which is all these numbers. And this is the condition. If when you multiply, you know, the int version of the square root multiplied by the next consecutive integer, if it gives you back the number, then, you know, you want to return those numbers. So let's see how this works out. Okay. All right. So it shows us a list. You can press the shortcut Control alt shift m to convert it to values. Okay. And you see that you have the same thing. So basically, it's the same implementation. This is just, you know, following it stepwise. While in this case, I just use a list comprehension. Once you get familiar with the list comprehension, you don't need to go, you know, this route and then, you know, create an empty list, append it to that list. What you're just doing basically is doing it all in one place and saying, yeah, this is what I want to return, you know, when you loop through this array and these are the conditions that I want you to test. With. If these conditions are satisfied, then you know, read on this. That's basically how to do it. So this is, you know, a Pythonic, you know, solution to the same problem. I hope this helps you, you know, to understand it. The logic is the same. You can watch the one where I did it with formulas and you see that it's basically the same. This is just also to help you to kind of, you know, brush up or step up, you know, your Python game, if you may. So I hope you like this video. Please do hit the like button. You can subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.